Every country has a way of dealing with their internal problems, dealing with their civil situation in their countries, their civil laws, their, their government, their government's response to law and order, the, the way we address our, uh, the problem of oligarchy, the way we uh, uh, address the problem of government run amok tyranny, uh, bubbling up in our governments. Each country has its own way of doing it. And this country, because we're so divided, is right now we have an epidemic of, of uh, gun violence, people shooting, shooting at innocent people. Trump just spoke his address, the highest levels of government, the way to address it is censor more of the Internet, red flag laws. You just heard Trump say it on uh, national television. It's a mental health problem, not a gun problem. Uh, now, I know people disagree with that, but uh, red flag laws where you go in and seize people's guns, uh, you, you seem to be implying that it is a gun problem. And what about the censorship of the Internet? What is the dark corner of the Internet where people speak openly and freely? Uh, so, Because we're so divided, because we can't agree on anything, that you are either left or right, and because you're either left or right, I don't agree with you because you're on the right, and... I, I can never live with you because you're on the left. And, and, and that's the, uh, the fundamental uh, problem right now where people are fighting each, uh, each other. In France, they have a little bit more of a commonality where the yellow vests are rising up against the government, gun, against the tyranny, the oligarchy, the corporate tyranny that's holding them down. At least some or may, you know, maybe 25, 30% of the country understand that it is an economic problem that it is almost always an economic problem. In Hong Kong, I want to talk about that because it gets very little press, and right now it's, a, it's bubbling over. Hong Kong is on fire right now. Millions of people in this small, you know, smallish uh, country. Where is Hong Kong? Anyway, let's take a look. So here's Hong Kong, right, in the, in, the, in the vast world that we live in. Where is Hong Kong? I mean, I've never been there. I've, I flew through it. I was in the airport once in Hong Kong. They speak a perfect English, almost a British kind of, uh, a British English, they're Chinese, but they speak uh, Cantonese and English in Hong Kong. Why do they speak English? Because they were a British colony all the way for 100 years, all the way up to 1997, where England's lease expired, <laughs> and, and China basically said, it's time to go, you know, and oh, by the way, if you don't go, we're going to shut the water off and shut off the power. So Hong Kong was fundamentally re-seized or re, uh, uh, re-appropriated back into China. Now, is China, China said, oh, no, no, we're going to let it run freely and, and, and uh, let them do their own thing. Uh, but that was before they became a, a very, very uh, powerful economic force. In the late 90s, they weren't much, and now it's becoming clear that they're a whole lot. So will China yield to Hong Kong's request? We'll look at what, what exactly Hong Kong is requesting. The, you know, how, however many million people there are requesting something from China to not to be treated like the democracy that they once were in terms of civil penalty, criminal penalty, extradition bill. I'll tell you what it is. But China has a, um, a rich history. Remember this place, Tibet? You remember this giant land block of property called Tibet that sits, you know, Nepal and Bhutan and all this? Tibet, they took it back, right? China just said, oh, no, 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 you know, this. it's all China. It's all China. And the other part that I, I, I hope I remember to talk about is Taiwan, where uh, Taiwan is also under the gun of China because I'll give you a brief history of, of Tibet and then I'll jump into uh, uh, a brief history of Taiwan and then I'll jump into uh, Hong Kong and, and what this extradition bill means to the Hong Kong people and how they're fending it off, the proper way to do it. All out, all out boycott, all out uh, strike on, on public utilities, on banks, on subway, on, on everything. All out strike by the people, for the people, of the people. So Taiwan is in a similar situation. Taiwan, brief history. Taiwan was a, uh, a spinoff of the Chang Dynasty up until I think the late 1800s. And the China, actually... From from the late 1800s all the way up to the 19, um, yeah, the late up up to the late 1800s, and then what happened is the 
the Japanese stepped in. Right? People don't know this about Taiwan. Originally, it was the Qing Dynasty, and, uh, and it was China. Right? It was the Republic of China. And then the Japanese came in because the Chinese were sucked. Their economy was sucked. They had no power. And the Japanese had a whole lot of power, and they were expanding around the globe. Right? Expanding peacefully, for the most part, in Taiwan. There was no bloodshed. They were welcome uh, there all the way up until the 1940s. Taiwan was run by Japan for the 40 years previous to that. People don't know that. And in Taiwan, the, you know, the uh, elders, a lot of people still speak Japanese. They speak um, Taiwanese. They speak Mandarin. Right? Why do they speak Mandarin? Because after the war, after World War II, when Japan fell to the West, uh, they made the fundamental error of bombing us, and the United States basically turned you know, Japan into a fire zone, right? Burn them, burn them. Right? And so what happened was the, the, the Japanese that were in Taiwan were no longer welcome guests because the Taiwanese people saw them as uh, losers of the war, right? And so the Japanese left. And what happened was the winners, what the Taiwanese people perceived as being the winners, were the, the Chinese that were running from communist China, that were, were leaving communist China, right? Before China became the, uh, a communist nation, the Chinese that were there fleed and, and found sanctuary in Taiwan and actually ran the country. And that's what you have now. You have a, you have a Chinese, an originally anti-communist Chinese representation in Taiwan in the government. And in China, mainland China, it's now a communist country. But the communists are now having, for whatever it's worth, you know, it's, that's just a term they use, communism. So now the Chinese communists are now trying to impose their will on the Taiwanese people, right? On the government, the initial, the original government of the anti-communist movement is now becoming the communist movement in Taiwan. And that's the Taiwanese people's biggest fight. Not the, not the Chinese in mainland China, but the actual government that is being purchased by the mainstream Chinese. So Taiwan is, is, in, is in, not in as bad shape as Hong Kong. See, China perceives Taiwan as, because of the Chang Dynasty, everything is China. Everything is China, right? So they're trying to expand. And will they stop? No, they, historically, China doesn't stop. It's very one track. So let's talk about Hong Kong because, again, get Taiwan out of the way. Taiwan is, is instrumental. So Ty Hong Kong is basically facing an extradition bill. And this is what it means. Right? This is why they're fighting back. Millions of people rallying in the street today on an all-out strike. I'll show you the video. It's violent conflict with the police tear gas. It looks like the beginnings of France all over again. But the numbers are way, you know, way greater. Uh, so, so here it is. So 2019 Hong Kong anti-extradition bill protests. Those are the protests that are going on right now. Are a series of ongoing demonstrations in Hong Kong against the very long, long phrase. Fugitive offenders and mutual, mutual legal assistance in criminal matters legislation bill. Uh, and that's proposed by the government of Hong Kong, which... Just as I described in Taiwan, the government of Hong Kong is now becoming communist-friendly China. Uh, so that's how they do it. That's what China does. They did it in T Tibet. They did it in, in, um, in, 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 they're trying to do it in Taiwan, and now they're doing it in Hong Kong. The legislation was proposed by the Security Bureau in February 2019 uh, in response to a murder that occurred in Taiwan the previous year where the murder suspect had fled to Hong Kong. The regional government, it becomes clearer in a second. The regional government, uh, the regional government was unable to repatriate due to the lack of formal extradition agreements between the two jurisdictions. Right. So here's what it means. If enacted, this is what, this is what the, the Hong Kong people are fighting for. And possibly the Taiwanese people are going to be staring down the barrel of this very soon, is if enacted, the bill would allow local authorities to detain and extradite people who are 
wanted in countries or territories that Hong Kong does not have extradition agreements with, including mainland China and Taiwan. Opponents of the, the legislation fear that it would, it would place Hong Kong residents and visitors under the jurisdiction of mainland courts, which are controlled by the Communist Party of China, and apply not only to criminals, but political descendants as well. All right, so now you have a picture. China wants to in, instill a law that says they can come into Hong Kong and extradite people uh, because they're political descend, they possibly political descendants or criminals. Now, that's the same thing in China. A, crimi- a, a political descendant is a criminal in China. So are the Hong Kong people right to make that, that uh, assumption that they will be prosecuted for free speech? For, for free press, where Hong Kong has always enjoyed for, for, for a century now? Yes, yes, absolutely. They have a, 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 a legitimate concern. So I want you to I want to look at some of the uh, video that's coming out of Hong Kong. It's pretty, it's pretty devastating. People are not even aware of it. Right? So. <laughs> like a war zone. Interestingly, the umbrella is the weapon of choice amongst protesters. It blocks, I guess, the tear gas. I don't see any pink ones. Umbrella, it blocks the, uh, I guess it blocks the, the, the rubber bullets, maybe, I don't know, but definitely the tear gas, the pepper spray, an umbrella of choice. Grab your umbrellas, let's go. So an all-out sanction, all-out boycott, this is last night, this is Sunday evening in, in Hong Kong, and right now it's already the following uh, evening, and the sanctions have gone through. More than 500,000 Hong Kongers from over 20 business sectors were expected to join the industrial action, with organizers on Sunday uh, urging all city employees to join the strike to pile more pressure on the city's embattled administration. Now, that's the way to do it. All-out strike, that's the fundamental problem that France made that they didn't do, that they didn't put pressure on the banks, that they didn't... You know, and this, it always comes to this. It always comes to a landslide of uh, police uh, confrontation. It's a shame that the police don't defect in place like th- places like this. Walk off of the force, you know, walk away. But sanctions, uh, not sanctions, but actual boycotting and, and um, you know, just not participating. Boycott, walk away, strike, all out pup, you know. Uh, individuals striking. If France would have done that, instead of just boycotting out in the street, uh, maybe they would get it done, you know, run on the banks. In the United States, we're so far removed from ever doing something like this, it's almost ridiculous because people are kept so divided by a fake news media. But in Hong Kong, they're scared shit. They don't want, nobody wants, nobody in Hong Kong wants to be extradited. They don't, they don't want to lose their rights and be extradited to mainland communist China and be tried under communist law for things that 
that uh, go on in their country and have been going on in their country for a very, very long time. So do they have a fighting chance? Do they have a real chance? Does Hong Kong have a chance of independence and fighting off the Chinese? Sadly, it doesn't, it doesn't look like the case because of the fact that China never retreats in terms of situations like this. They didn't retreat in, in, um, they didn't retreat in Tibet. They haven't shown any signs of retreating in Taiwan. And now they're in full force in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is preparing, this is last night's news. It's already updated. Uh, massive flight cancellations, commuter chaos, traffic jams, and this service disruptions on Monday when the largest city strike in decades takes aim at public transportation networks and crucial industries to, pro to protest against the government's extradition bill fiasco. Uh, shut down the airport. Right? Uh, more than 1,000 commercial flights were initially uh, due to depart and arrive in Hong Kong on Monday uh, with 511 service cancellations. So airport, shutting down the airport. What else are you guys doing? More than 500, half a million Hong Kongers from over 20 business sectors were expected to join the industrial action. Uh, so there's a lot going on there, right? So it did happen. Pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong have launched a rare citywide strike crippling parts of the city as the semi-anonymous territories uh, warn the demonstrations are heading in a dangerous path. So this person, um, Lam, I believe is, uh, is pro-China. Right. See, that's the fundamental problem. It's always politics. You've got to get rid of these politicians. These are evil fucks. These are the people, historically, you have to hang in the public square because they're, they're traitors. They're traitors to the... To the uh, they're being paid off by the communist Chinese to, to uh, you know, they're implants. They're basically inserts into the, into the Hong Kong uh, politics. Hong Kong police arrested a record 82 people on Monday. At least eight rail, railway uh, lines, including the Airport Express, were shut fully or partially. Seven protests, several protesters were seen blocking entrances, entrances to commuter trains, occasionally leading to fighting with other passengers. So it's not all out, but it, it, is, a, it is a significant um, show of strength by the Hong Kong people. How many people in Hong Kong? How many... Oops. How, I'm curious. I forgot the popular. How many people in Hong Kong? How many people in Hong Kong? All right. So it's a population of 7.3 uh, million. And you've got, a, you know, you've got almost a half a million to a million people out on the street protesting. At one point, the number was actually much higher. There was 2 million people at one point. So there's a huge percentage 25% of the country is out on the street protesting. Now, it, it speaks to also, where's the other 75% of the country? What are they doing while, while you know, shit is going on? So that's all I want to do. I don't think that um, no one really touches on this issue of Hong Kong, but it is, a, it is a rights grab by the communist Chinese. They don't play nicely. They will squeeze Hong Kong until Hong Kong can't breathe anymore. It's the foot on the throat. Um, phenomena, the Hong Kong people are fighting back vigorously. They want their rights. Nobody wants to be extradited to a, to a Chinese communist court, a kangaroo court, and be tried on political crimes or crimes against the homeland, China, uh, because that's where it's coming down to. What about, you know, what about here? You know, you just had Trump say, you know, they're going to start censoring the Internet, red flag laws to take away your guns. Uh, people don't, because people stopped... People stopped gathering. If we could boycott in this country, I'll just say that. If we can boycott in the United States, boycott, for example, strike the banks and sink the banks or divest out of the stock markets or just stay home from work for, for one week, we would bring the oligarchy to its knees. Now, it, it's, it is really that simple. And, you know, how is how everything just stops, right? You have enough food and... You survive uh, for one week, and everything comes to a screeching halt. And then, then you know, the, the, the politicians will listen to what the people are saying. Fortunately, 
in this country, media keeps people so divided and so confused that they don't know what to say. The right will say, oh, it's the immigrants' fault. The left will say, no, 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 it's the corporate, you know, it's the, uh, it's the, the, uh, the racists' fault. The people in the middle, like myself, will say, no, no, it's the corporate oligarchy. It's the corporations, the billionaire class that's squeezing everybody else, causing the problems they don't pay taxes, right? Who's right? Who's wrong? Of course I'm right. The middle is always right. <laughs> the fucking middle is, is, is correct in this issue. Uh, I don't think anybody disputes that it is, it is corporate tyranny at this point causing the problem. Six largest banks and such, cheating in the elections, paying off politicians, money in politics. And it's not necessarily the Hispanic in the street or uh, it's not necessarily the fact that someone wants to close the border with a wall. It's, those, are, those, are, those are fringe, uh, fringe uh, uh, details of the greater problem of corporate oligarchy. So Marcus Conte reporting here, on, uh, here in New York, reporting on our brothers and sisters in Hong Kong and uh, hoping that they're... Uh, that they have a smooth sailing through this uh, very, very rough time fighting off the communist Chinese. Marcus Conti reporting.